you know, uh, two cas- cassettes decks <laughs> running through a DJ mixer. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because half of us started out with DJ equipment whenever we were using to play our, you know, our records. Oh, so how did you make this? So what did your, when you say production, there's a big jump in there. Yeah. Tell me about that transition from you playing that eight track keyboard to the time to your early, I want to know about your early days in production. How did you, what, how did you approach it and what made, what gave you the idea to approach it that way? Man, it's just really. I just think I, it was it was something that I fell in love with. So I started to search around for programs that would make it even easier okay. for me to um, okay to to record like a uh, cakewalk and logic. That's it. Uh, cakewalk, cakewalk. Yes. Now so now I'm a cakewalk. So you started logic started with, was logic was a little bit of overhead though. It was yeah yeah, but uh, I kind of merged over to the cakewalk side. Yeah, <laughs> cakewalk. Okay, and uh, you know cakewalk has uh, has uh, back then I don't. It wasn't really as great for audio, right, but right. it's very easy to put your music together. Because the sequence, remember the, the little sequence, remember the pattern was? The patterns and the, the piano roll, I don't, they don't know what we're talking about. My buddy about. tried but to anyways. stay with that version for like about four, and they had updated it five times. He was like, no, man, yeah. I still want that. I still want my little man. Because it was so easy, it's, wasn't it? It makes it very easy because then you start getting into quantizing. <laughs> Which is like, I don't know, the audience knows what quantizing is. Quantizing (laughs) means to take, (laughs) when we play a beat, it's not going to be perfect to the clock. So there's a clock inside of a music program that will lock your tempo so that everything lines up. That's right. Click, 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 click. Or you could do it in percentages. You know, you could shift percentages of of, of, (laughs) of realness. Exactly. So now it's like, (laughs) I can play a beat and then it's like kind of off beat and then I just put the quantizer on it and now it's in beat. Based on the timing, so that's I, when I learned that I was like, okay, now this is even going to be easier nowadays with all of the samples and stuff. It's even well, it's so it made you approach world. your songwriting differently. It too. did, you know. I mean, the majority of my songwriting is really like it's, it, I laid a foundation first with the bass and the drums. Like if I, I'll sit on the keyboards and, and think of a chorus because I'm a chorus guy. I like okay. hooks. Okay. So I'll be writing a chorus or a hook, and then I'll, you know, I'll save that, and then I'll say, okay, what's going to be the bottom end? What's going to be the bass? What's the bass and drums going to be doing? And then I'll get that going, and then I'll put the keyboards uh, as a as a um, accompaniment over top of that while imagining what I'm going to do in a saxophone. The thing about while the, imagining, that's exactly, the truth. While imagining, exactly, what you're going to do. that's so cool. Exactly, and the thing <laughs> the thing is is. Um, producing is it's just a whole different world. Oh, hell yeah. It's like you have to you have to put down your performance hat and put on your production hat. And be disciplined, and right? And be disciplined to uh, make the background music work together. And then after all of that is done, you got to put back on your performance hat and say, how are we going to perform this song? How are we going to approach this song? Does it sound better on alto, tenor, soprano, so on and so forth. So that's how I've, I've been approaching my writing. Sometimes I get songs... Uh, a, a quick melody in a dream and I'll just go and lay that melody down on the piano real quick and just save it and think about it later. Um, so the song that I wrote uh, that was number one for 12 weeks on the Billboard, I'm Waiting For You, I actually found myself auditioning several different courses for it. Um, and uh, the, the amazing thing is, is if you come to my studio and see and listen to some of the... Um, <laughs> some of the rough drafts <laughs> you'd be like wow you know man oh you were going to put that chorus over it and that chorus got like eight different choruses going and then and then i finally chose the right one i think that made a huge difference to the success of this, of that song and so it, one thing about writing is in producing it you get very excited especially in the nighttime you're like oh my gosh this is great i'm, I'm just on a roll and you wake up in the morning and listen to it you like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said my studio. At least look at this wonderful way you represent, again, the modern approach because you're able to conceptualize using mm-hmm. the, the electronics as a tool. You've been using yeah. it all this time. Now, yeah. I understand why you recorded your your album. Now, where yeah. did you record them? In a studio or part of, Well, let, let me guess. I guess you sequenced <laughs> some of the stuff at the pad then went to the studio or what did you do? The most, well, mo- the majority of everything, let's talk about the, la- the latest record Jack came Joyner. Okay. Most of all that was produced and recorded in my studio. Um, at your I house? Did, at my house, yes. Yay! <laughs> I, did, I did record. Well, yeah, I have I have a soundproof thing going on. Yeah, you know? okay. Um, I did record some of it um, at uh, Brian Bromberg's studio. Okay. Um, and uh, really nice studio. I recorded the live band there. I took all of the tracks um, from, from there to my studio, and then I started to build strings and things like that around the music and... Um, I actually 
I was going to play alto, and this song is Don't Want to Miss a Thing. That's right. a song by Aerosmith, um, and I'm playing tenor on that song, and I recorded it at Brian Bromberg's studio on alto, but when I went home and played it on tenor, I said, yeah, this is a tenor song. So I recorded I re-recorded it. <laughs> well, you know what's so cool about today is, too, the that saxophone part. you can even have multiple mixes of different tracks now, and even mm-hmm. put stuff on the internet, because people yeah. are doing it. But that's so wonderful, because I guess, and when you go, one of the benefits of going to the big studios, besides being plush and wonderful, is that you can do the drums there. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, it's hard to do drums. drums at the home studio. Well, here's the thing. Uh, um, I've done drums on several of my tracks just from emailing uh, tracks to the drummer and just uh-huh. having it, or taking a track to the studio and they record the drums. And then, and then the, I bring the, the drums tracks. back and then I build the music over. Or, and I have my bass player come over or have my guitar player come over and everything is locked in. Nowadays, man, this is the digital age. And, I mean, I, I remember I recorded a song with Paul Jackson Jr. Yeah. In, um, in my hotel room. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, wow. this is after a show in uh, Burks. We did Burks this year, um, which is in Reading, Pennsylvania. And he was going on right after I was going on. And I said, man, you know, I got a track for you, man. I really think that, that, you, that you would like. And I think you fit right in. You know, what's going on this, this evening after the gig? He's like, oh, man, I, I love to do it. So he said, yeah, maybe around 8 o'clock. So two hours, Paul Jackson Jr. just created some amazing guitar rhythm tracks i mean he the way he writes his rhythm tracks i think is just next to none you know it was just and I, i'm just sitting That's there listening wonderful. to him put these guitar parts <laughs> yeah. and i'm just like man just grinning you know, you're the first person, <laughs> he's the first person that we've really talked to that embraces the technology like that's, that. That's, I yeah. guess that's why I had to spend so, because, you know, when you get two geeks together like that, you know, because who else wants to talk about cakewalk? Wait a minute, you got another geek? Let me let me chime in here, because Mac Port Townsend, Washington, chimed in and said, wait a minute, y'all need to check out Mixcraft. Oh, <laughs> so, man. yeah, Mac... I know. We do. I did. Yeah, I went stop the lap dance and did. work the mix crab, bro. I got stop you. Stop the lap dance. <laughs> well, we're going to actually show some of Mac stuff too. Mac is downstairs at GNM Bureau Chief, 70 years old up there. That's uh, right. Long time history in radio. That's right. Uh, and produces and, and directs and runs every that weekly show, yep. uh, Retro Jazz and Blues, and that's uh, online with mac.ning.com. Got it. So, Mac, take a look at this. We're about to show this piece from YouTube uh, featuring. To keep joining her. That's along with Brian Culbertson, you guys. Take a look at this wonderful piece here. Pre-commercial? Buffer? Man. <laughs> Can we do the pre-commercial, man? You got to, man. You got to keep it going, man. You know... Thank you. 
Right, right everybody. That was nice. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Mm. That's fun to watch a couple of years later. <laughs> <laughs> he says, that's a while back, huh? It's not even really like a solo as much as it is. If you watch it, you really think it is the song. Oh, not a solo. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what a, got me. Yeah. It's improvised. Yeah. Know? That was hot, man. That was fun. I remember that. <laughs> man, two years. Jeez, man. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. Cool. So now tell us about uh, what's coming up this weekend. You got some things. You got a performance coming up this mm-hmm. weekend. Yes, uh, I'm going to be at Spagatini's uh, Jazz Club or Jazz Grill Club, which is uh, one of the really good clubs, I think, uh, right outside, right yeah. in the south of Los Angeles. Um, well, in Seal Beach. But um, you get to hear me and my band together. We, we, we play at 8, start at 8. We go, we're done at 11. Um, which is um, kind of a long set, but the cool thing is, is I like um, long sets from the good cool, musicians. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The cool <laughs> thing is, is, is it's not scripted. You know, the huh. show is just going to be like fun and very open, um, and I love it. You know, playing with playing with my band and some of the guys that we actually uh, the majority of the guys recorded um, on the last record too. So, who tells about who's in the band now? Uh, Keita Matsuno, who also plays with me uh, with Keiko Matsui. He played. He played the majority of the guitar work on okay, um, okay. on the latest CD. Okay. Um, uh, Les Butler is my keyboard player who actually played the key- keyboards on one of the tracks on the CD. Okay. Uh, KT is playing bass. He also plays bass for um, Paul Taylor. Um, okay. And Ray Johnson actually he's out here in Compton. Are Compton, we Compton? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, get right there. we always, we always on Compton. <laughs> we love Compton. Where are we right now? I've been locked. We, we, you know what, Mario? When he asked the question, I said it all depends on who's looking yeah, at it. Yeah, this is South Central. It's South Central yeah, for some folks. The Black the, Beverly Hills for others. Yeah, where's Black the hills, Beverly Hills. Mer Park is right there. <laughs> okay, that's right. We the righteous brothers of the Mer yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it all depends on perspective, you that's know. Right. And for our folks and neighbors down the hill, they say you're. You're up the hill, aren't you? Looking down on folks, aren't <laughs> oh, you? Oh, man. Yeah, see? See? Wow. wow. No, it, it, it's, it's L.A. far as everybody okay. else can L.A. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so um, people should go to my website, www.jackeenjoiner.com. Um, that way you can keep up with my tour schedule. Um, the ticket sales here at Spagatini's, they usually go pretty fast, so... Make sure you guys give them a call. I actually don't have the information right now. Oh, they can search. Google that, you Google guys. Spag- Google Spagatinis. It's spelled like spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Spagatinis. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and definitely come out and check it out. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to be at the um, House of Blues with Keiko Matsui in Anaheim on the 8th. And then we're heading up to Vegas. We're going to be doing the Green Valley Ranch together. And then we're heading to Tokyo, uh, December 15th. We're going to be doing uh, the Blue Note there for three nights. We actually just finished wow. doing the Blue Note in New York last week. And that was fun. I had a great time in New York. It was freezing, though, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> so with all that, boy, you're used to that weather. Here, everybody, take a look at the website, by the way. Here we have the website. You can take a look. Once again, the, and, the, and the address easily enough is www dot jakeem joiner j a c k i e m j o y n e r dot com and they mm-hmm. can track your schedule they can follow your tweets and your yeah. facebook and see the wonderful articles uh wow you were you were talking earlier about uh digital yeah age and uh f- funny thing is is we were on our way back from vegas on uh on monday uh which is well monday we came back from vegas and um and uh we want to take advantage of cyber monday